the Bears have begun the Justin Fields era in earnest with no interruptions planned, barring an injury. Let's pray not for that. He's Dan Weeder from the Chicago Tribune. I'm Dan Miller from ABC7. Dan, big news out of Hallis Hall this week. It is a moment, and yet it seemed like Justin Fields took it in stride. Well, first of all, we've had a couple big moments at Hallis Hall. On Monday, Matt Nagy told us when Andy's healthy, he's our starter. And then on Wednesday, he did the quick 180 and told us it's Justin's show for the rest of time, right? So here we are, and Fields obviously has taken it in stride. He's a, a, a kid who has a, a ton of self-belief about him. I thought it was really funny to hear him acknowledge on Wednesday that his parents were in town and, and asked him to go celebrate when uh, they got the news that he was going to be the, the full-time starter going forward. And he said, nah, go ahead without me. I'm going to sit here with my dog, Uno, and, and watch film. And so Mr. and Mrs. Fields went out. They had dinner. <laughs> Justin stayed back. And it, it just kind of tells you the, the temperament and the mindset mm -hmm. of this kid, which is a reason that this promotion is being made with a level of comfort and trust inside Hellas Hall. I think the Bears coaching staff learned a lot in week four, watching a guy come back from a miserable performance in Cleveland and find a way to not only steady himself, but steady his teammates and the offense get a win and now it leads them to believe that that the turbulence going forward while is absolutely inevitable maybe not as jarring and so here we go what struck me a couple of things struck me listening to Justin yesterday um was was that calm demeanor about him as well but this is someone who who chooses to wear number one right his dog's name uno for crying out <laughs> loud this is someone who wants to be the best he didn't want to go out and celebrate because this is what he expected right like he he felt that he was ready for this he feels like he was meant for this so to him this was just a step this was just another day this wasn't a reason to celebrate because i'm just getting started like this is just what i'm supposed to be doing and and that really struck me it also dawned on me yesterday listening to matt Nagy, that what the, the crazy that has come out of that man's mouth over the last two weeks and it has been straight up bizarre right i think a lot of that was because of how he had to deal with andy dalton and it was becoming so evident that the promises they made to a veteran who has been a professional, but the promises they made to him and the relationship they're building with him made it harder to now say, okay, we have to insist on this because everybody sees it's time for Justin Fields, but we promised you, so we're gonna try and navigate this. And I think that was part of it. So once that was behind Matt, hopefully he comes back to some semblance of sanity when he talks to us and and that part is removed yeah so i'm with you 90 percent of that i'm not a subscriber to the promise gang i don't think that there was ever you this promise that the bears were were attached to i think this was more so matt nagy feeling like he had to get to 10 wins and sneak into the playoffs to secure his job and so his belief mm -hmm. coming into the season is that a veteran who's going to make you fewer game losing mistakes is the better path to trying to get to 10 wins in a playoff appearance now, to your point that I agree with, it's the, the, the idea of trying to protect Andy's feelings a little bit has been evident really for the mm -hmm. last couple months. And I think it, it, it creates some of that jumbly mouthed, you know, incoherent rambling at times that doesn't present a clear message to anyone. And when you're not presenting a clear message to the media, it's one thing, but when you're not able to present a clear message so that the rest of the organization, including the players and coaches in the locker room, understand what the actual vision is, that becomes problematic. Hopefully, with the excitement of this field's announcement, announcement comes relief that we don't have to deal with all this double speak, right? And trying to do two things at once and trying to balance an ego here and a, a hurt feeling there and trying to figure it out. Another notable thing that Justin Fields said on Wednesday afternoon was, look, I'm the starting quarterback now and I don't have to worry about hurting feelings. This is not yes. something you hear come out of a rookie's mouth no. ever. And so this is a guy who understands what that alpha role is as the starting quarterback of a major franchise in a major market. And he says, screw it. Everything that I do from this point forward is about putting myself and this offense in position to have the highest level of success. And we don't have time for hurt feelings or bruised egos or whatever else is there to it. And again, for a rookie who's a month into his NFL career, yes. that was impressive to me. Incredibly, it caught me too. I listened to it twice this morning again, because I was like, this was that moment where I understood that he was he was meant for this, right? Like this is what he has been preparing for and he's not afraid. The object here is to win. It's not to protect your teammates' feelings and make everybody rah-rah and feel good. Now, the, the only issue that I've, well, not the only, but the, the, one of the main issues I've had with the way Matt Nagy has handled just the last three, four days has been his insistence like, okay, yes, there people are having success. Bill did a great job calling the game, but oh, by the way, 
it's still all about me. And that's where I, I'm hoping that the excitement of this field's announcement doesn't lose a team who is hearing their coach say, yeah, but it's still all about me when when it's not, it's it's not. And and what you're, to your point about winning, getting to 10 wins and saving his job, the only way to do that if he's running the offense and he's dialing up the plays is to have Andy Dalton there because he clearly couldn't adjust to Justin Fields. And that that was scary for everyone involved. Well, there's no question that you have to go to a simplified version of your offense when you're asking a rookie quarterback to run it. He just doesn't have the library of experience and understanding of what opposing defenses are doing to him to get to the sophisticated level of offense that Matt wants to play. And so, you know, there is some of that concession from, from Matt's chair and saying, look, we're going to have to do things different than I envisioned doing things in 2021, which means being a little bit more basic on offense, which means establishing the running game like they did with Bill Lazor calling the plays against the Lions, which means setting your quarterback up for play action and throws that he can make with extra protection, but yes. that have more opening to them because the defense has to account for a reliable running game, even with David Montgomery likely to miss the rest of October. And so this gets very right. complicated going forward. Part of it gets complicated because it's going to test Matt Nagy's discipline on how yeah. – able he is to keep the game plans simplified, how able he is to set just enough for success without feeling the temptation to get to, you know, the back pages in the playbook that have more layers to them that a veteran quarterback can run. That's a challenge of discipline. It also leads us to, to question just how valuable can Bill Lazor be in a role that I think you and I would both assume he is going to keep for the yes. remainder of the season, particularly after Justin said, I like the calm in his voice yeah. on the headset and the way that it just trickles down into what we're trying to do. Let's see where it goes. I think also the credit that they're giving to Flip is, John Flippo is is warranted. Like there's so much just in sheer observation as how much he's in Justin's ear and how much they're going over things together. And you see Justin nodding when he's talking through things. And I feel like they're building a very strong connection. That's why he's here, right? Yeah. Like that's the whole reason he's here. And I think there needs to be some credit given there. I know that's hard for Matt Nagy to step away because he's supposed to be the quarterback developer and the groomer, but he's no, he's made it very clear. He is the head coach. And on Sunday, he enjoyed being the head coach as opposed to all the stresses of running, of calling the plays at the same time and the chaos of doing that. I think that's very telling the way that Justin talked about it. He, he didn't, it wasn't an indictment on Nagy, but he basically said, you know, Bill doesn't have to worry about special teams and defense. All he's doing is watching from above and he can, he's in a calm setting and he can tell me what to do. And, that says a lot about the way that Nagy was spitting things out over the last couple of years and trying to get guys to perform the way he wanted them to. Well, and, and another part of this is the growth, right, that Justin has made really since May. And it's not linear growth. It never is with a rookie quarterback. There are going to be dips. There are going to be movement. But there is consistency, right, to the mm -hmm. growth. And I think the coaching staff saw that and said, why would we want to interrupt that when he made such significant growth from Cleveland to Detroit? Why would right. you then want to say, hey, go sit on the bench for seven or eight more games and, and not continue this this growth that we're asking you to make, right? Or, or, or try to continue it in a different role that doesn't necessarily allow you to be on the stage and experience the things you're going to experience. The other thing I want to run by you is, is we talk about this ability to deal with struggle and this ability to deal with hardship. You just feel this confidence that Justin mm -hmm. Fields puts forth that, yes, things were a mess, but we've got this, right? It's the, the, the we've got this confidence that you need in that role in order to keep things going. And it's in such contrast to what we experienced through Mitch's run where, you know, you think back to the opener in 2019, they lose that game 10-3 to the Packers. And that struggle and that loss and that inability to achieve what you thought you were going to achieve mm -hmm. seemed to sit with Mitch and Matt and the offense for three games, four games, five games, six games, yes. seven games, until we got deep into November and we're like, oh my God, this struggle is still there. I always said Mitch struggled with struggling. If we learn mm -hmm. anything about Justin last week, it's that he doesn't seem to be susceptible to that vulnerability. No. And I think that too tells the coaching staff that might have been a little bit scarred from some of the things they experienced with Trubisky that, okay, you know, we're going to deal with some, some ups and downs, but boy, this kid really has a way of steadying himself and those around him that makes it feel a lot less anxious when you walk into the building on a Monday after a loss.
for someone to say at the age of 17 or junior in high school is when he let go of all those other things and realized like, you know what, I, I'm going to go out here. I'm just going to do my best. I'm not going to overthink it. I, I know what I can do. And, and that confidence, I mean, like, wouldn't every parent wish that on their child, that they wouldn't be impacted by all the noise going on around them. And I even love the fact that he makes jokes about no, I'm not answering that question because when I put that out there, you, it gets all twisted and turned around. Like he's just, he has a maturity about him that Mitch did not have. I mean, and we spent four years trying to like, trying to build him up to this and they're going to develop it. He, he just didn't have it. And I think a lot of that is the the stages that Justin has played on, the the guys in the NFL. He's been around since he was in high school. Cam Newton was always his favorite player. So somebody who has exudes that confidence, that's, that's what his examples have been. And we're seeing it now unfold in a Bears uniform, like in a way we haven't seen before. Well, he cites Russell Wilson all the time, too, and did so post game on Sunday, citing a tweet that Russell Wilson put out with the Seahawks in a two game losing streak, saying, I love adversity. And Justin saying, I know that feeling, right? And, and, and saying that in some weird way, he was glad that the disaster in Cleveland happened because it brought out a different person in him, right? And the, and the person that he knows is inside there. That's a yeah. great quality to have in a quarterback. Now you got to make plays consistently. You have to understand that that it's not always going to be as easy as playing a Detroit Lions defense that has <laughs> zero playmakers, right? You look at that depth chart and you go, who's the guy that's going to wreck this game? There isn't anybody, right? And so Justin right. Fields had an easy test at home against a winless Lions team that came into the day giving up more points than anybody else in the league. Now you're going to go into a stretch of games here, which we've talked about before. This next stretch of six games before Thanksgiving oh, right. is challenging, right? And you're going to have to prove against some good defenses and some better opponents that you can keep your team in football games. And so I will hope that the, the outside world is ready for some of the pronounced dips, right? Those aren't going away. But hopefully mm -hmm. some of the highs kind of counteract that enough where you feel like, okay, the goal for 2021 is and always should have been getting Justin Fields ready to play at a championship level as soon as possible. And right. this move to move him out of the, the, the number two role, give him starters reps during the week to play the last, you know, it will end up being what, I, I guess 15 games that he'll start if it's yeah. barring injury. That's a big deal towards your future. And what was mm -hmm. sort of throwing me off during all of this circus over the last few weeks is it seemed as if Matt was losing sight of the future with a yes. desire to make sure that his future, <laughs> you know, was was supplemented by a present where they could actually win games. And who knows where those conversations at Hellas Hall went to assure him that, listen, you don't have to get to 10 wins. If you show that Justin Fields is going to put us in a position to, to contend for something meaningful in 2022, if you're seven and 10, so be it. Well, and please sound like common sense is somehow reigning in your brain when you stand at the podium. Like you don't, he was a national laughing stock for those two weeks. It, it, it was all over the place. Right? It was yes, and and you can see why he he was nervous for his job. You can see why, and perhaps that is that he was given some sort of assurance behind the scenes because the way he sounded yesterday was much more decisive than he did the last couple of times that he's sat up there and 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 been so just so all over the place that you kind of sat up and you were like, wait, what's, where am I? What's going on? Like who is no one actually listening right now? But I will tell you talking about the reps at practice last week, I did notice. Now I know that Andy was still nursing some of those injuries, but typically when we watch practice, how does it go? QB one, QB two, third string, right? Like that's how they run through their reps. And last week I saw Justin taking them before Andy and then they'd switch around. Like I actually saw that happening. So I, I feel like he was getting a lot more of those reps because I know Andy was hurt, yeah. but I, I I also know that he was able to do more than they thought that he would. And so it was just interesting to me to see that that was much more loose than it had been in the past. So now they've got to figure out how to turn this offense into something that's consistently productive. And again, the, the worst thing that happened was David Montgomery spraining I his know. left knee in the second half of that game. Because what you saw on Sunday against the Lions was that when they commit to David Montgomery and they give him help up front from a, a, a offensive line that wants to run the ball and tight ends that are capable of blocking, all of a sudden you can create that identity. You can get that rhythm going. You can create all the things we talked about earlier with play action. Well, now David Montgomery leaves the mix. And my worry yeah. is that it will tempt Matt Nagy to try to get tricky and creative and, and you know, overthink things when Damian Williams is every bit as capable of a running back yes, he is. of creating that identity, right? So that's the challenge for Sunday in Vegas against the Raiders is making sure that just because David Montgomery isn't in uniform that you lose 
the urge to run the ball and set a tone early and establish your offense in a way that creates rhythm and confidence and, and sets up your quarterback and your passing game for success. That's a big challenge for Matt Nagy because he hasn't shown us throughout the, the, the duration of his three plus seasons here that he's able to commit to that consistently. Let's see where he takes it. And wasn't that a relief seeing the injury report yesterday that Damian Williams was able to fully participate? Yeah. And, and he looked good well, too. That's that. And that's the key. They need, they need that kind of a, a back that's capable and ready to go. And I'm with you on the consistency. Can they do it consistently? This week it is a big test, not only because we want to see if that next step, if they can kind of build off of what they had against Detroit, but we're talking Vegas. We're talking Bears fans who can drink a city dry that are going to be nuts. It's an afternoon game. It's, it's, this is a big, I feel like this is a big moment, not just for this season, but for Justin and this offense to show that they can be consistent and to and and that's exciting i i'm like i'm eager to see it and when you've been a mess on the road you know the first two games yeah. uh, on the road in, in la and cleveland and now you go to a road venue but to your point you're going to have thousands and thousands of bears fans there and it's going to be this supercharged environment and when justin makes plays you're going to feel that in the stadium like you don't feel that in every stadium because there are going to be such a large contingent of bears fans there and so that adds to the excitement of this first sort of official start, right? The the, the first yeah. start of, of the new era going forward. Let's see how Justin can handle it. Matt has said multiple times, and this has caught my ear Sunday night, again Monday, and I think he may have mentioned it again Wednesday, that Justin has to figure out ways to make himself better Monday through Saturday. And I think yeah. that is a, a sort of subtext of saying, look, there is a lot that goes into establishing a preparation routine, a lot that goes into knowing what you want to study at certain times of the week, delegating responsibilities to your your other guys in the quarterback room and figuring out how to set yourself up for Sunday. He's brought that up multiple times, and that's not because he's bringing it up just to bring it up. That That's clearly something that they've observed that they need to help yeah. him get better with. And it's going to be interesting to kind of dial in with people in the coming weeks to figure out what that is and where those little shortcuts are to make sure that you, as a young quarterback, are, are understanding how to set yourself up for success and not needing all the help of the coaching staff. And in that regard, I'm glad it's Andy Dalton and Nick Foles in that quarterback room because Selfless those guys, are right? That's what I was gonna say. Those are two guys who are not ego driven. They're not. I mean, clearly, what did Andy Dalton do when he got the news? He called Justin and said, "Our relationship's not going to change. I'm here for you. How how can I help you?" Like there aren't there aren't a lot of people in the world who are who are that humble and will just say, "All right." There's more people who will say, "No, no, no. It's my time," and be selfish about it. And they're not like that. Neither of them are like that. And so I think. That's this that quarterback room is perfect for him to be in right now because he's got these guys who've been there, they've done it on the biggest stage, and now he can tap into what they what they can offer to him as far as managing that Monday through Saturday kind of preparing yourself for the the biggest day, which is Sunday. So this is my last question for you before we get out of here. Do you think that this city and 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 in general the critics that follow this team are able to see this through clear eyes and honest eyes, I guess, in terms of understanding I felt like there were some plays made in Sunday's game against the Lions that were sort of put on this pedestal as this other world play. My point is that if just because it's rare to Chicago doesn't mean it's elite by NFL standards, right? <laughs> right. So some of these throws that Justin is getting praised for are, are throws that high-level quarterbacks make four and five times uh, every correct. single week. Correct. And so I hope that that we, as a collective city of Chicago, that includes fans, media, everyone else, can just be honest with what we're seeing and not be so, uh, I guess, tempted and, and rushing right. to, to praise every last throw and every winning performance as this is it. That was a breakthrough because there wasn't anything special, in my opinion, about Sunday's win over the Lions. It was a good home win against the uh, opponent that you had to beat. But let's slow down, right? They, they still only scored 24 points against the Lions. <laughs> right. Justin Fields threw for 209 yards. They were still one for eight, I think it was, on third down. This wasn't this, like, breakthrough. Was it an improvement? Absolutely. But now it, it, it comes down to can we see this through honest eyes? Can you, Deion Miller, see it through honest eyes? I was going to say, well, wait, you look like a JV team in Cleveland, and then you come out the next week and you're able to complete passes and move the football. Yes, that is reason to be excited. And I think you're right. Just because it hasn't been seen on the lakefront in however many years doesn't mean that it is it is elite. I think fans are just so eager. I hope you're, I hope I'm with you on that. I hope that people can take a step back, give an honest assessment of what we're seeing, because I think 
Justin is giving it an honest assessment, right? Like he's not getting ahead of himself right. thinking he's some sort of grand glorious I've arrived moment. He's he's thinking at okay, that's just the next step. What can I get better at? How can I improve? That's what he enjoys about watching. That's why he didn't go out to dinner with his parents. He's watching <laughs> tape. He is so so hopefully that fans can kind of temper their enthusiasm when they see him doing things that a quarterback in the NFL should be able to do. The elite will come with consistency. That's what I think. But okay, so Vegas, who's your money on here, Dan? I'm, I'm picking the Raiders because I just haven't seen enough from the Bears on the road to believe that they're ready to play consistent football for four quarters on the road. Raiders have a really good offense. I like the way the Bears defense is playing right now. Sean Desai is getting a lot of credit from me right now for the way he's utilizing his playmakers. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game, but but I, you know, I just again the, these first two road games, twenty point losses in both of them, they don't leave you with a lot of confidence that this team is ready to go clear that hurdle yet. They could prove me wrong. I wouldn't be stunned if they win, but but right now, uh, Logic Lane tells me to, 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 to follow that right down to a, a Raiders win, and then we'll see where we go from there into a six-game stretch again. That is, you know, this boom, is boom, the start boom. of the six-game stretch, but yeah. then you follow, you know, with the, with, the, with the Packers coming to town the following week for a game that's going to be absolutely electric by Soldier Field. Where are you going? Oh, I'm I'm in Logic Lane as well. I'm tailgating in Logic Lane this week. I I think the Raiders are going to win too. I I'm with you though on it has been so bad. I want to see it be improvement on the road. Like anything like that would be helpful. But I will say I'm I'm going to go with this forever that I called Justin Fields first start <laughs> way when the schedule came out. Like I am clinging to this that I got it right. I said Cleveland and and here we are three yeah, games you're, later. You're a genius. Maybe. What's What's the weather going to be like on my birthday? Can you can you help me predict that? <laughs> I have no idea. The sun will come up. That's what I can tell you. <laughs> I'm not so sure. In Chicago right now, it hasn't come up in like four days. I know. We should acknowledge that I'm not in Chicago. I was going right to say, now. before we let you fly, you are in Houston. You, you I am in time. Houston. Game one of the ALDS is today. I'm be excited. Um, see what the White Sox can do. This is cool. Do you have cool. a serious prediction? I think the White Sox win it. I really do. I think they win game one. I think they, uh, and then they win games three and four in Chicago. I think it, they, Sox and four. Sox, Sox and four. four. On to the well, ADS, if I can yes. predict Justin Fields first start, I certainly can get this right. That's Sox right. And four. So here's my question. I gave you a recommendation for a Mexican restaurant in Houston. Have you gone? No, I've been working, Dan. My I'm, last two meals have been, ugh. hopefully I can get there. We'll try. Guadalajara del Centro. That's where I leave I'm you. on it. I'm on it. Enjoy the game. Um, what is it? Gracias, senor. <laughs> <laughs>